Hello everyone, this is your favorite Murtad live once again and today we have a very very interesting topic but before this topic I have somebody who wants to come up live so let's see what this friend of ours have to say about so that we could listen to him first before I open my topic because my topic is means nothing right now because we have a a Muslim who wants to come up live so I'm going to send the invite to him right over here so that he could come up live before I start my topic so my topic is interesting as well but because he wants to have a discussion so let's do that okay uh ahmed you have the link so come up live now is the time before somebody will going to block you so now is the time for you to come up live you have the link come up and talk so guys uh, this fellow Muslim wants to have a talk and he is already in the chat let me show you what he actually stated so that we will all be on the same page Ahmad Karim this is his statement under the video under the video which says how to treat or give the clothing and what kind of clothing you can give to Malakat al Yameens the right hand possessed slave woman so he want to have a talk with me sorry he wants to have a debate with me and if he wins I will stop criticizing Islam and my answer is sounds like a plan if you won't be able to prove Islam a true religion then you will call Muhammad a false prophet up live the live stream is scheduled so he had almost six hours rather a little more than six hours to prepare and I had six hours to come back home from wherever I was so now is the time for this guy Ahmed Karim to come up Ahmed Karim would you like to come up or should I start my topic because when I start my topic then you will have more trouble time to come up yalla yalla come on hurry up Andrina, Andreen, and Ryan. Not right now. Right now, it's the chance for Ahmed Karim to come up and have a talk. And seems like he's gone. Did anybody mute him? I don't think so. I can't see him muted by any mod. Nope. I can't see that. So, Ahmed, where are you? Why are you wasting our time? Uh, tuh, 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 tuh. okay so it seems like he's gone okay Ahmed Karim rest in peace let's go to our topic all right so Ahmed Karim is resting in peace now he cannot say I did not give the invite I stopped my live discussion and I allowed him to come up so now he can't say that later that I did not do that he was here as you guys have seen he was chatting with you guys until I went live I went live he saw me live 10 seconds later he was gone so now I can't do anything let me go to my 
today's video. By the way, there was another stupid uh, whose text was there in my in my today's live stream as well, as you have seen. Who was very, very interested in telling me that he can prove me wrong. OK, so as you have seen my. Uh, today's. Where is it? Let me see. Again, so share my screen. Let me share it again. So this is another guy, Zubair Quraishu. Okay, Mr. Zubair wants to talk with me, and he said if he talks with me once, he will make me be a Muslim again. So. Zubair also ran away because every time I told him to come up live, he said, give me your WhatsApp number. And by the way, you will find Zubair uh, in multiple locations uh, in my different chats. And now I have blocked him because he's just a ignorant person who would state certain things again and again and again. And he doesn't want to come up live. He only wants to say, give me your WhatsApp number. Uh, yes, Rob, that's the time for me to recite Shahada, you know. I have to recite Shahada now. So, man, they are very, very good people, you know. They are very, very good people. And they have to convert me to Islam by giving me, by asking me, my WhatsApp number. You want to come up? Talk to me. I do live sessions. Talk to me live. There is nothing more that you can ask me for. Trolls after trolls. Oh, Rob, why do you want me to be a Hindu man? Seriously speaking. <laughs> come on, brother. Seriously, Hindu? Yeah, by the way, Hinduism is far better than Islam, anyway. So yeah so let's talk about today's video now so last video that i uploaded was about malakat al imans or the right hand possessed woman of uh muslim okay and then i found this video uploaded by uh, our brother uh, who uploaded it islamic clarity and i saw this and I was laughing and I was laughing so hard that I said I have to do this. I have to make a video on that. By the way, guys, remember Ahmed Kareem ran away. It's not me. It's him. So let me share my screen. And audio. All right. So Malakat al Yameen or right hand possess woman and Jazia goes hand in hand. These two things goes hand in hand. Okay. What is a Jazia? In a simple word, when Muslims occupy the land, they impose a certain amount of money to a Muslim, uh, to a non-Muslim, specifically Christians, Jews that they have to pay annually, that's called jazia. And I wish that this guy, Ahmed Kareem, would have been here because he would have given us a lot of answers on that. But anyhow, let me play this video. Listen from Uthman ibn Farooq, Uthman ibn Fuban's own mouth, what he says about it, and then he, we will see what kind of a big lying slob this guy is so let's look at it from the donkey's mouth first you live by your own religion and oops services being provided by the government you have to pay into it it's a very simple thing if you use the services you're going to be paid so it is a service fee it's not a non-muslim tax because 
if it's a non-Muslim tax, then even if you don't use the services, you should have to pay. But that's not the way jizya works. Only when the government that is run by Islamic law provides you services as security, you know, uh, as far as uh, welfare, as far as what today we have roads and hospitals and all these things, then you need to pay into that, whether you're Muslim or not. As a Muslim, you'll pay zakat, you'll give sadaqah, you will have those methods of giving, which are religious obligations. As a non-Muslim, you will not be forced to follow Islamic religious practices, but you will pay jizya, which can be less than zakat sometimes. So this is not a non-Muslim tax, it is a service fee. Okay. Four things that this guy said. Four things. He guys, this guy said four things. Let's analyze all of these things together one by one and we will see. Thing number one. Let's go back. Let's listen to thing number one. What is the thing number one? Government. Government, you have to pay into it. It's a very simple thing. If you use the services, you're going to be paid. So it is a service fee. It's not a non-Muslim tax because if it's a non-Muslim tax, then even if you don't use the services, you should have to pay. But that's not the way jizya works. Only when the government that is run by Islamic law provides you services as security, you know, uh, as far as uh, welfare, as far as what today we have role. So now, it is not a non-Muslim tax. That's what he first said. Can anyone in the entire wide world show me that a Muslim in a Muslim occupied land has paid jazia? This is my first question. Can any Muslim, can any Muslim show me that a Muslim paid jazia ever in the history that's my first question and you will not find the answer for that because the answer is no <laughs> you will not find a single muslim who had paid jazia in a muslim occupied land you will never find it because jazia is imposed on non-Muslims. So the first lie that he did, the first lie that it's not a Muslim non-Muslim tax. It is a non-Muslim tax. Now, let's talk about point number two. He said that the government is facilitating you. Okay. When the government is run when by the Islamic government law. that is run by Islamic law provides you services as security. Services and security. What is the service and security? You know, you need to understand the service and security part because unless you understand the service and security part, you will not be able to understand this. So what kind of service and security a Muslim government has to give to the non-Muslim to ask for jazia? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. This is three. Okay. Chapter number eight. Okay. This is Sahil Muslim. Sahil Muslim, chapter number eight. What does chapter number eight says? It says, let me go to this one. Messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight against people. So as long as they do not declare that there is no God but Allah and he who professed it will guarantee, professed it was guaranteed the protection of his property and life on my behalf. So, so do you understand the security that you are getting by paying jazia is your life by the hands of the people whom you are paying jazia. Do you 
do you understand do you understand what kind of security you are getting from by paying jazia protection mafia thank you tony king yes so the first thing that you you will get is your life the security of your life because you are paying jazia thank you for your super chat brother adiba jo adiba jo lanu i hope i'm pronouncing it right so thank you so very much for your super chat and we see more i have been commanded to fight against people till they testify to the fact that there is no god but allah and believe in me as messenger i have brought and when they do it their blood and their riches are guaranteed protection on my behalf so neither your blood nor your wealth is secure unless you pay jazia unless you pay jazia okay let's look at sahih al bukhari this is sahih al bukhari now imagine how peaceful this religion is okay how peaceful this religion is and how peaceful jazia is this is very important then yeah very very important okay as soon as i share the stream yard link uh they come up with these the finger guy you know the finger guy i hope you guys know that guy who comes up every time he starts popping up again and again with the finger fyi so anyhow let me keep talking so this is sahih al bukhari a man Umar sent the Muslims to great countries to fight the pagans. Hmm. Really? Okay. When Al Humayzan embraced Hurm Hurmuzan, Hurmuzan. When Al Hurmuzan embraced Islam, Umar said to him, "I would like to consult you regarding these countries which I intend to invade." Guys. what is happening over here what's happening over here is islam defending or is it invading first of all we saw the hadith from sahih muslim unless you accept allah and his prophet neither your wealth nor your life is protected now umar is saying how and which countries should i invade thank you invasion raid invasion yes they are trying to pick hmm let's pick this one or this one or this one or this one okay he gave a story bird has wings and head and etc etc you cut a wing he will still stand with two legs you cut a this and this and that and this and that unless you cut the head so let's kill the koshar let's destroy the koshar okay fair enough let's destroy okay so they decided on attacking this but what is happening so he went up to them in front of the warriors and they are standing in front of them and he is telling them we used to be miserable okay came out with 40000 warriors koshar came out let one of you talk to me al mughaira replied asked whatever you wish the other asked who are you al mughaira replied we are some people from the arabs we led a hard miserable disastrous life that was the life of arabs until muhammad started caravan robbery okay we used to suck the hides and the dates stones from hunger okay 
we used to wear clothes made up of fur of camel and the hair of goat so this is what these people were from the mouth of the horse bukhari is reporting it these people had nothing until muhammad came up and he gave the jazia and he gave them to go and destroy everyone okay and to worship trees and stones which they still worship stone while we were in the state the lord of the heavens and the earth elevated in his remembrance and majesty in his highness sent us from among our self a prophet whose father and mother are known to us okay who are they <laughs> our prophet the messenger of our lord has ordered us to fight you till you worship allah alone or give jazia till you worship allah alone or give jazia <laughs> so now is there an abdul here guys if there an abdul comes up let me know and our prophet has informed us the lord say whoever among us is killed shall go to the paradise to the brothel of allah to lead such a luxurious life as he has never seen because in the brothel you will have so many big bubu women and whoever among us remain alive shall become your master see they will become the master the master okay the master now this is the basic part of jazia basic basic okay we will see in another hadith it is the sahih al muslim hadith okay it has been reported from suleiman buraida through his father that when the messenger of allah appointed anyone as leader of an army or detachment he would especially exalt him to fear allah and to be good to muslim who were with him okay messenger of allah is doing what sending the armies this is the link fight in the name of allah jihad fi sabilillah and in the way of allah fight against those who disbelieve in allah so you literally have to go out and fight you are not defending you are fighting okay make a holy war do not be embezzle the spoil do not break your pledge and do not mutilate the dead bodies do not kill the children when you meet your enemies who are polytheists invite them to three course of actions what are the three course of action if they respond to any one of those you are accepted and withhold you etc 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 islam if they respond to you accepted from the this from fighting against them then invite them to migrate from their land to the land of the muhajirin so you have to tell them hey leave this land this land is ours if they refuse to migrate tell them that they will have the status of badwan muslim and will be subjected to the commanders of allah like other muslims so every other muslim will become the commander of allah will become what the commander of allah is what mujahid okay but they will not get any share from the spoils of war or fill except <laughs> check this out guys check this out this is how these muslim defend themselves this is how they defend themselves like i'm talking about the hadith i'm talking about the quran and this is how they defend and he's showing the bra of his mother imagine that this is the second time he came up so i think this is the same guy ahmed kareem probably because that's what he wanted to that's what he wanted to see 
and crazy people man so it's like i am hurting them seems like i'm hurting them for what i'm reading exactly what's written not even saying anything of my own like i am reading exactly what their what their own islamic sahi authentic sources are saying man crazy mm. what can i say okay so let's go back but they will not get any share from the spoils of war except when they actually fight with muslims against the disbeliever if they refuse to accept islam demand from them the jazia so jazia Hey Sam, uh, the guy ran away. He came up with a different name, and he came up like he just wanted to show the finger and etc. Man, they're they're coward. They're a bunch of coward, just like their own prophet, man. Thanks for coming in. God bless you, brother. You can jump in if you want. We are talking about Jazia. So yeah, this is this is the stupidity of these people. <laughs> Lord bless you, brother. Lord bless you. So. if they refuse to pay the tax allah's help and fight with them <laughs> and this this is the cowardness of their religion this is the cowardness of their religion they cannot refute me that is why these idiots come up with these kind of names and these kind of things okay now let me show you another one before i move into what happened okay yahya related to me from malik from naif from aslam that mawalla of umar bin al khattab that umar bin al khattab imposed a jazia tax of 4 dinars on those living where gold was currency and 40 dinars Uh, dirhams on those living with silver was the currency now this is very important because now i'm going to go back to ibn fuban farooq i'm going to go back to ibn fuban farooq and then we will see what ibn fuban farooq has to say about so remember four dinars according to usman and i'll show you other other narrations as well and then 40 dirhams on those living where silver was the currency Let's see what is this guy has to say. Same, same idiot. Okay, banned him. Okay, now, like they have so many YouTube accounts, like Allah Himself, man. These are, I don't know what they are. Jazia tax on four dinars and those who living with golds forty dirhams. imagine what he said so remember that and now let me go back to ibn fuban farooq the same stupid lying flob who can only lie to promote his religion and that's why we are here to demolish their lies check this out guys you know uh, as far as uh, well things then you need to pay into that whether you're muslim or not as a muslim you'll pay zakat you'll give sadaqa you will have those methods of going okay as a muslim you pay zakat guys did you hear the liar that as a muslim you pay zakat and as a as a jew or christian you pay jazia you need Read. to pay into that whether you're muslim or not as a muslim you'll pay zakat you'll give sadaqa you will have those methods okay now let's talk about zakat and sadaqa how much zakat to pay do you know you actually have to pay 2.5% of the wealth that you saved in a year okay so i'm going to go to one of them here okay let's look at the link uh zakat okay this is not about zakat this is where to pay zakat they are they are asking for zakat islamic relief people so forget that part let me see 
zakat how much zakat that you have to pay okay there we go there's an islamic source you actually have to pay 2.5 percent and not on your annual income guys remember not on the annual income but on the saving okay there are certain minimal requirements to pay zakat so check this out i hope you guys will like it which people are qualified to accept zakat uh, no uh, okay when should the zakat be paid zakat is accepted after the section of one lunar clear uh, calendar 355 days of having ownership of cash by proprietor so once you have a cash amount or gold or silver saved for 355 days you have to pay 2.5 percent on it let's read this one how much zakat should be paid zakat is 2.5 percent or 1 by 40th of the cash possessing the proprietor the proprietor ought to deduct the advance the individual in question he inquired from another at that point check sector 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 forget the rest okay so yes jesus is the only way to heaven amen god bless you thanks for your super chat but right now we are talking about zakat so check this out nasab nisab so you will have to have certain amount of money what is the nisab to be liable for zakat once wealth must be more than a threshold figure so it's not that you save ten dollar the whole year and now you have to pay 2.5 percent on the ten dollar no 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 not at all for zakat you have to work on the nisab first how much is the nisab first the nisab by the gold standard is three ounce of gold means 87.48 grams so if you have more than 87.48 grams of gold then you pay zakat on that gold otherwise you don't have to otherwise you don't have to do that or it's cash equivalent this is approximately 3560 i don't know depending on when this article was written i don't know what the current value is on the april 16 2019 okay but will vary with the market value of the gold silver so it doesn't matter you don't need to have this much money you have to have this much of a gold and on the silver 21 ounces of silver okay which is 612 grams of silver and the cash value is approximately 324 on april 16. so you have you can only pay once you are at a certain threshold that is what zakat is okay that is what zakat is but when it comes to jazia as i have shown you already there is nothing called minimum threshold you have to pay this jazia okay so they, that is why they have put it in the zakat forum you know the title is zakat jazia tax of four dinars on those living where gold was currency and 40 dirhams on those living where silver was the currency that's it that's it now i will have certain people who will say adam you are wrong you are wrong some people has to pay less and some people has to pay more okay now this is i'm gonna show you where they take that from okay now check this out let's share everything with these stupid ignorant people and let's demolish ibn fuban al farooq 100 personally this is the link guys okay Megdarul jazia the quantity of jazia okay let's translate this into english let's see okay the amount of tribute it's the quantity miqdar okay of jazia the quran does not tell us what amount of jazia nor does it tells the amount of zakat 
thank you but for a zakat every muslim has a consensus but for jazia they do not but for jazia they do not that's the problem okay for zakat all the muslim has the consensus for jazia they do not okay now he is telling us umar took as well sometimes increased so abu ubaid narrated he imposed one gold people four dinars and for the people of paper 40 dirhams means if you if you are living in a place where the gold coins is your currency then four dinars if your people where the silver is your currency then 40 dinars and despite the livelihood of them okay and they also have to give three days any muslim who will come to their city residence they have to give residence to any muslim who would come to their country city residence for three days that's part of jazia now here it says the malikis now if you are following the madhabul maliki imam malik then what is happening they believe that the jazia is not valued at minimum or maximum and that imams considered so according to imam malik who took the umar's reference he said there is nothing called minimum or maximum there is nothing called minimum and maximum and you have to pay jazia to everyone to whatever it is there is no minimum and maximum then the tab probably is salafis let me say that let me see what is that and there we go the same idiot as we all know this time he came as a hammer time he is destroying his ibn fubn farooq as well okay so the first one was uh malikia and hanafia okay so the second one is hanafia which they actually imam hanafi which they actually translated it as tap i don't know tap okay so hanafi imam hanafi actually said they see they see it in three categories the rich pay 48 dirhams the middle class pay 24 dirhams and the poor pay 12 dirhams now imagine guys when we talk about if even if we take this the hanafis to be the rightly guided people okay even if we take hanafis the rightly guided people and forget the malikis okay and we only take the subsect of sunni islam of hanafi okay you still have to pay 12 dirhams as a poor person what is a poor person a poor person cannot even have his own food three times a day that's what poor means so a poor to whom the zakat of muslimi should go to if he was a muslim instead of getting the zakat this poor has to pay 12 dirhams every year the guy probably be earning 1 dirham a month because that's what poor means so he probably will be earning 1 to 2 dirhams a month that guy has to pay 12 dirhams a year that's the reality and i thought i would have a nice debate with some guy but seems like i have dogs in my live stream rather than uh, real muslims okay thank you kyle myers that is correct three categories okay now let's look at the fourth category the salafis so imam shafi shafi sorry imam shafi what did imam shafi said they believe that the jazia is estimated at 1 dinar for the rich and the poor and it is permissible for the governor to increase it just at umar then so now as a shafi you will say i'm going to set it at 1 dinar but the governor can increase it to 200 dinars and you can't do jack because it is up to the governor how much he can increase any abdul here any abdul who would defend 
his ibn fuban farooq who claimed that jazia is like zakat on muslimi ibn fuban farooq is the biggest liar deceiver on the face of the westerner muslimi i challenge him to prove me wrong can he come up and prove me wrong he was very happy to go have a debate with a atheist haris sultan and he did a debate with him in urdu so ibn fuban farooq guys take this session cut this part ibn fuban farooq i will debate with you in urdu as well come up and tell me how you compared zakat with jazia now let me say something to him in urdu because he stated something in pashto and he stated that in pashto saying that you guys do not know pakhtuns that's what he said to them he said to them you guys do not know pakhtun let me tell you let me tell you pakhtun you don't know me <laughs> oh man crazy guys okay as for humblies so imam humble they narrated from the three previous opinion so he's like all three are good <laughs> and abu ubaid preferred the opinion of the malikis which seems to be more likely okay so now this is this is also did i share this link to you guys check this out guys keep it okay enjoy that so now let me tell you or show you another interesting thing okay what happened when they actually conquered the area where is it give me a sec guys let me find it did i lose it come on mine okay uh and that's bad give me a second guys sorry about that sometimes things get a little bad okay i got it let me share any abdul so far or all the abduls are sleeping okay any abdul okay there is the link what happened when okay this link is not going to go through hey david i have sent you the link can you please uh, make a tiny link of it and share it please there you go can you please make a tiny link and share it with everyone okay now this is the tarikh of arabia fil misr al aswad al hakim al arabia of misr okay let's see umar bin abdul aziz said copts are like slaves and the imposition of jazia on the dead copts okay so let's look at it again Umar bin Abdul Aziz said Al Baid wa Faraj al Jazia ala mauti al Qabat the cops the ones who are dead okay check this out the Sheikh al Arabi historian Al Makrazi mentioned in his writing on the books of Huyain bin Suhar 
to Umar bin Abdul Aziz asking him to make jazia of the dead copt on their neighbors. So if a Coptic Christian is dead, his neighbor has to pay the jazia. Guys, do you understand what you are reading? Can Ibn Fuban Farooq tell me how does zakat equates to this? Check this out. So Umar asked Arakam bin Malik and Arakam said, I did not hear them with a covenant or a contract, but they took by force the statures of slave. So because when Umar actually attacked the Egypt, he won. So basically, there is no contract signed when they took over the Egypt, right? That's what he's saying. Hence, they are all their slaves. So Umar wrote to Huayan to place the tribu tribute, means jazia, of the dead copt on their neighbors. And Yahya bin Abdullah bin Bakir said, Abdullah bin Salam, uh, Sal uh, Sal uh, Sal Salama bin Abdul Rahman went out wanting Alexandria and the ship. So he needed a man to row. So he mocked a Coptic man. So he spoke about that. They said they are just like slaves. We don't care. We're going to mock them. We're going to do anything. And if somebody is dead, his neighbor has to pay the jazia. Yep. And I have shared the link. Okay, check this out. Next. Egypt was conquered by force without a covenant or contract. Hence, what's going to happen? Ubaid Allah, Ubaid, uh, Ubaid Allah bin Abi Jafar is reporting. The writer of Hawaiian told them they needed some wood to make the island. Okay. So he then wrote to Sektra Sektra. He mentioned to him that he found the wood with some of the dhimmis. Some of the dhimmis. Dhimmis are the ones which are under you. You who are taking, who are giving you protection tax according to Ibn Fuban Farooq, which is equal to zakat. Those dhimmis that they hated to take it from them until he knew. So Umar wrote, from the, wrote to him, take it from them for the value of justice. It is justice that we will take their wood that they actually cut for themselves to burn so that they could cook or they could get the heat out of it. For I did not find a contract for the people of Egypt to fulfill them. Hence, take whatever you want to take. So take whatever you want to take. It's all halal. They are dhimmes. So go take the wood from there. Take a chill pill. Okay, <laughs> that's that's the reality. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik and etc. 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 became the ruler of Egypt. He became etc. Uh, etc. etc. And he inflicted hardships on the Christians that they had not been afflicted before, because those Christians are dhimmis. The cops in journal, the cops in journal, the Eastern who fought against him and killed a large number of them in the year 700. Usama bin Zaid, who was the responsible for tax levy on Christians, attacked them and took their money. He marked the hands of the monks with an iron ring in which the name of the monk and the name of his monastery and its history was written. They make it hard and put it on their hand so that it will burn on their hand and they can never remove it. Mark cut off his hand and wrote to the works of whoever found among the Christian did not leave the leaflet, the ten dinars and etc. etc. Punishment. This is what you call dummies. And this is the governance that Ibn Fuban Farooq is talking about that the government is going to give you security and it will give you, you don't have to pay jazia if you are not getting the value of the money from the government. They are dhimmis.
they have to pay or this is what is going to happen with them read next check this out strengthen him on christian increase in the absence people are counted and beasted and make every christian sama image of a line and following them in his grandfather without making cuts his hand abdul malik is killing burning land of the corpses and the nuns are raped and the nuns are raped don't pay jazia this is what is going to happen it's written in your history it's written in your history by the best people of you which you call the golden era this is the golden era of islam that's what muslimin call golden age of islam uh, they fought and killed many of them then went out with the sword not the sword fish and fought with killed in the war and many cops were killed with them in the year 32 and died and then the cops went against rashid so marwan and muhammad sent them when they came to be defeated them and arrested them and etc 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 deceived them pushed them so this is a full history of it the safe caliphs and etc okay let me go down there is another one now ahmad ibn tolun presented egypt as the prince over it then etc he stayed 25 years and died after ahmad ibn tolun obligated to his carry 20000 dinar in which he sold the quadrant of the churches and doled on it and the land of abbasian were apparent in the egypt and he sold the churches next to hanging from the kasra to the jews and the area decided upon the christians they were selling churches they were demolishing churches they were doing all that this is what we call the hardship faced by copts in the egypt at the hands of muslim occupiers by the way all this article is written by a non muslim but he is talking about what the historian muslim historian al makrazi is mentioning it's not even translated in english i was using google translator to show you a muslim شيخ المورخين العرب المقرازي في كتاب عن كتاب الخيان بالشريعة مسلم سكولر بوك هي is referring and quoting from there and you are telling me jazia is a zakat how much of a deceiver you have to be to say such a thing to say such a thing now that you heard some part of it now check this out i'm going to share my screen again i'm going to show you again what ibn fuban farooq ibn farooq is saying check this out guys now listen to it now you will now you will see why when i saw this i was laughing so hard on his lies because now you would know why i was laughing so hard because he is just a lying slob everything and anything he says is a lie and still use the services being provided by the government you have to pay into it it's a very simple thing if you use the services you're going to be paid so it is a service fee it's not a non muslim tax because if it's a non muslim tax then even if you don't use the services you should have to pay but that's not the way jizya works only when the government that is run by islamic law provides you services as security you know uh, as far as uh, welfare as far as what today we have roads and hospitals and all these things then you need to pay into that whether you're a muslim or not as a muslim you'll pay zakat you'll give sadaqa you will have those methods of giving which are religious obligations as a non muslim you will not be forced to follow islamic religious practices but you will pay jizya which can be less than zakat sometimes so this is not a non muslim tax it is a service fee less than zakat itself which can be less than zakat itself that's one part that he said right so yes if you are such a rich person that you have millions of money whatever money that you have dollars rupees dinars dirhams if you have millions of them and you have saved them they are not 
invested so remember as a zakat if it is an invested money you don't have to pay anything because you are doing business on it it has to be in the bank as a saving for over a year then you have to pay 2.5% okay for some rich people when they pay zakat the jizya could be less that's the only truth that he stated in his entire video the rest is all lie as you have seen it already as you have seen it already but i'm not done yet <laughs> i'm not done yet i'm still not done yet he is a lying slob nothing more nothing less okay let's go to give me a sec okay this is a document of hadaya okay this is the document of hadaya page number 225 and it talks about jazya jaziyat or capitation tax okay let me remove this part let me zoom in a little this is one of the books that you use in sharia so when the sharia will be implemented on you guys if the muslim occupies your land this will come into play once they have fully occupied and they are in power so jazya is of two kind okay the rate which is such as may be agreed upon by both parties so if they are conquering your land okay and before they conquered your land they had a negotiation with you guys okay and you guys agreed that we're going to pay x amount of money at jazya that's a agreed upon tax the second is which is highlighted in yellow second is that is which is imam himself imposes where he conquers infidels so there are two types one type is that you are standing in prophet google welcome home god bless you god bless you guys as you all know prophet google was sick he was hospitalized thank god that he is back home god bless him lord give him his strength energy and heal him completely so that he could work for the kingdom of god with more passion and more power in jesus mighty name i pray amen amen prophet google welcome welcome god bless you thank you for telling us that you are back home so first part of the jazia is you are standing in another an army and you are saying we are more powerful than you start paying us jazia we will occupy your land and then do whatever you want to do in your land just keep giving us jazia okay the second is the imam himself imposes it jennifer thank you so very much for your super chat god bless you sister thank you now if we read forward into this okay let me okay let's go down a little okay capitation tax is to be imposed upon the people because this is mentioned in quran chapter number 9 verse number 29 chapter number 9 verse number 29 and it is in the same manner same manner imposed on modulis as the prophet imposed capitation tax upon modulis capitation tax is also be imposed upon the idolaters of ajam this is contrary to opinion of shafis so shafis do not believe that the capitation tax should be imposed on other than jews and christians that's another problem okay who should actually pay the jazia 
so but basically jews and christians have to pay jazia okay al farooq al sayyid come up live come up live because you want to you want us to give jazia come up live and show me if i am telling anything wrong first let's see that 20 years from now you will be bowing your knees in front of lord jesus and you will be a footstool of jesus just like muhammad is a footstool of jesus that's what will happen so don't be a coward and come up live and prove me wrong there you go i'm sending an invite again let's see if you are more coward than baby aisha who muhammad raped at the age of 9 or you actually have some dignity to come up live and prove your statement come on now is the time now is the time let's do that let's see what you have to say see i'm i'm so open come up come up talk so how do they defend it so their defense of jazia <laughs> their defense of jazia is so good that you will die laughing let me share my screen again this is their defense of jazia check this out guys the romans placed the jazia on the nation they subjugated and it was much greater than what muslims put in afterwards so what is the difference between muslims and the roman occupiers what is the difference between romans and muslims they are both infidels stupids going after money and sex and that's what the reality is they are comparing themselves they themselves are comparing themselves with romans the same way romans wanted women to have sex with the same way roman took money jizya from their occupiers where they occupied in the same manner muslims are doing it except according to the muslimin muslims take less money than romans wow this is just so awesome muslims thank you so very much you take my land you take my woman and then you will do what you'll do what we are better than romans <laughs> hey you will not argue with me because you know that i will demolish you just like i demolish your prophet every day your prophet i demolish every day so come up live and talk or i'm going to start demolishing your prophet who is not even better than the spit that i throw on the ground so my spit is cleaner than your prophet that's what i'm claiming so come up live prove me wrong okay now let's go back yes ibu ibu yes you are akbar alazim because when raman conquered france they imposed on each one of its people a tribute a jazia whose amount varies between 9 pounds and 5 pounds per year or about 7 times the tribute of muslim which muslim which area because now if we go down he talks about three different sects each have their own type of jizya now check this out they're saying we are taking less than romans so we are so good <laughs> man this is called abdul's demolishing themselves <laughs> man let me
let me share the link with you guys. Uh, make tiny URL. Where is it? Uh, where is it? Oh, copy. There you go. Okay. There you go. And <laughs> seriously speaking, I get amazed sometimes after reading their articles as well. Like this is an article written by Muslimin, which is Sharia zero seven three eight three four. I've sent the tiny URL link to you guys. Okay, this is a Sharia document. Okay, I'm not saying that. Okay. It is their own people saying that, man. <laughs> and that idiot comes up and say, we will be in power in 20 years. You guys are saying that from the last 1400 years. We will be in power. <laughs> the only thing that you guys conquered a land was because the Christians were nice. They were so nice that they allowed you guys and when they started the sword, which was far too late, 600 years after or 500 years after, Christians, crusaders come into play. Okay. And they did that only for 40, 50 years. If I'm not mistaken, I have to verify and check. And that's it. And it stopped your invasion. That is it. Christian crusaders stopped the invasion within 40, 50 years. As soon as the crusaders came up, your progress stopped. And then you went towards the southeast region. Then you went towards the Hindu region. Then you went towards the Kohindu Kashana Sektra. You stopped the eastern part. You guys were finished in less than 40 years or 50 years. This is the Crusaders which stopped you guys. And in today's world, we the speakers are the Crusaders because you guys lie. We expose your lie. You guys and your imams are lying left, right and center. And we are exposing your lies. And I have a challenge for every Muslim in the entire world. I have a challenge for every Muslim in the entire world to come up and prove to me that Islam is the true religion and Muhammad is the true prophet. I will stop my channel. I will delete my channel if you can prove that. <sighs> Poor little souls. Gets deceived by these guys. These Imams every day. And they come up here. And they can do nothing. Yes, Chloe wakes. 1.8 billion Muslim. That's the challenge I have. I have a challenge for 1.8 billion Muslim. Prove me that Islam is the true religion. And Muhammad is the true prophet of God. I will close my channel. I will shut it down. I might even recite Shahada, man. And yes, without Islam, without without lies, Islam dies. Yeah, Kelly Myers. They, like over here in my live chat as well, you have seen like multiple people came up. Stop it! Stop! Don't say anything about my religion! Don't say anything about my religion! Am I not my religion? Don't say anything about my religion! My feeling gets hurt! My feeling gets hurt! Don't say! So what about the feelings of all the rest of the people? What about my feeling? Come up and refute me. Tell me that I'm wrong. I'll stop it. I'll stop it. Why are you crying over there? 
Stop it! Stop it! You're awesome! Awesome! Stop it! Stop it! You don't know anything! You don't know anything! Call me on WhatsApp! I will prove you! Call me on WhatsApp! Why call you on WhatsApp? You stupid! I'm here live! Talk to me! Call me on WhatsApp! You stupid! You don't know! You fool! You fool! Seriously? I'm the fool. You guys are the fool. You guys have been made a fool. And you are being made a fool every day. You have been made a fool every day. Haha. <laughs> Crazy guys. Crazy it is. What can we do? Let's look into another narration. Okay. You look in Sharia, you look in fake, you look in Hadith, no matter where you look it, no matter where you look it, you will find that Jazia is a humiliate is a disgusting thing on non-Muslims. Yeah, and, and secondly, a face-to-face -face debate. That's another thing. I forgot that. I forgot that. Thank you, Ajay Kumar, for telling me that. Yeah, there are few people who come in. I want to have a face-to-face -face debate. Dude, do you want to give me your daughter in marriage? Like, I'm not 53. So if I'm 53 and your daughter is 9, let me know then. Before that, why do you want face to face? I don't want to show my face. I want you to show me what is written in the scriptures. Why do you need to see my face? Face to face. Like, come on, man. Ha <laughs> ha. Face to face. Face to face. Mo did Momo, did you guys ever saw the face of Momo? Who saw the face of Muhammad? Okay. Anybody, can anybody show me the face of Muhammad? Please. Any Muslim. Can any Muslim show me a face of Muhammad? If they cannot show me the face of Muhammad, then they still accept the things which are said by him, quoted by somebody 500 years after the death. Okay, not 500. Sorry, my bad. 300 years after his death. And they still accept it. But they don't accept. When I am showing the same thing. But when their imam shows it. With putting all the sugar on top of it. They accept it. They like sugar. You know. Give me a poison. But put sugar on top of it. And I will eat it. Give me poison. But put some sugar on top of it. And I am going to accept it. That's the thing. That's their thing, man. That's their thing. You know, don't you guys get tired of that? Don't you guys get tired of that stupid, idiotic things uh, repeated again and again and again and again and again and again, which has literally nothing in their favor at all and all they do is dance around the black stone all they do is dance around the black stone let me grab something to drink my glasses over in the meantime enjoy the latest dance
Okay, I'm back. I hope you have watched some of the Allah Akbar chanting that they do while they actually do the circling of uh, invisible Kaaba uh, to become holy and get spiritual closeness to Allah. And uh, this is a uh, part of uh, Sunni sect, uh, Sufi, Sunni Sufi sect of Islam who are trying to get closer to Allah somehow. God knows how, but yeah, they are they are doing that. Wallahu alam, you know. Wallahu alam. Okay, now let's go back to this. Uh, sorry, I had to grab a glass of water. <sighs> yeah, yeah, related to me. So imagine the guys who can't even pay, who can't even pay jazia. What do these Muslims do? They, I have already shown you. They take their woman. They take their woman. They rape them. They take their property. They even take their livestock. They even take their livestock. <sighs> he said, but it is, she is blind. Umar reported, then put him in the line of the other camel. He said, how will I be able to aid the ground? Umar asked, is this the livestock of a jazia or a zakat? And I said, from the livestock of jazia. Umar said, by Allah, I wish to eat it. You wish to eat it. Adam said, Aslam said, yes. It was the brand of the jazia on it. So Umar ordered it to be slaughtered. And then there were like 11 portions created. And prof wives of the prophets were sent those portions as well. And I do not think the livestock should be taken from the people who pay the jazia except jazia. Huh? Huh? So I do not think that the livestock should be taken from the people who pay the jazia except as jazia. Dude. <laughs> So he couldn't pay the jazia, and you took the livestock of that person as a jazia from him. And that's jazia. And that is jazia. And that is jazia. Let me give you the link of this hadith. Okay. Enjoy. Enjoy, guys. Enjoy. <clears throat> now let's go to. Let me go to the Quran verse now itself because we have seen enough references uh, from the other sources. Let's go to Quran 929. The problem is that it says Wahum <sighs> Zagirun. Okay, so that they would be humiliated. So that they would be humiliated. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah in the last day, who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger has made unlawful, and who do not adopt the religion of truth. From those who were given scriptures. Okay. Utul Kitab. Okay. So that until they give jazia willingly, while they are humbled. What is the footnote over here? A text required of non-Muslims exempting from the military service and entitling them for protection of Islamic State. Man! Even Quran.com, the footnote of Quran.com destroys Ibn Fuban Farooq. It destroys Ibn Fuban Farooq in itself. It says a text required of non-Muslim. <laughs> okay, let's go to the tafsir of this ayah. Let's go to the tafsir of this ayah. Okay. Let's go to... Uh, where is Ibn Qadir? Yeah, Ibn Qadir. <laughs> okay. Innamal mushrikoon a najis. Verily, the mushrikeen are najis. They are dirty, filthy, impure. Allah said, uh, said, all of the sacred area of Haram is considered a masjid for Allah said because the mushrikeen are najis. They are dirty, filthy. Okay. Now it says, <coughs> Al-Mu'minun la yunjis. Disbelievers 
does not become impure, does not become filthy. So Muslimin can never become filthy. Okay? Even if they lie, like Ibn Fuban Farooq. Okay? Insha, until, Wahum Zaghirun. So, and they feel themselves subdued. The ayah means, this will be your compensation for the closed market that you fear would result. Therefore, Allah compensated for them, the losers, inaccurate because they serve ties with idolaters. By jazia, they earned from the people of the book, similar statement were reported, Ibn Mujahid, Ikrama, and Saad bin Zubair, and Kartada, and etc, etc. And they did not say, humiliated, where is it? It should be here. Did they change it? Hmm. Uh, okay, hold on. Hold on, it must be here. Okay. Da, 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 da. They pay jazia with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. Therefore, when people of scripture disbelieved in Muhammad, they had no beneficial faith in any messenger, but the messenger brought rather. They followed their religion because this confirms their ideas, lust, and their ways of forefather don't become the Allah's law, and etc. 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 Yet, when he was sent, they disbelieved. <laughs> okay, where is that? Come on, man. It should say that. I have seen that multiple times over here. Otherwise, I have to go to Arabic Ibn Kathir and I'll show you. Hatta yu'tiyoon al-jazia, if they do not choose to embrace Allah, an yadin fahum zahirun, disgraced, humiliated, belittled. There you go. That's the meaning of zahirun. That's the meaning. Any doubt now? That's Ibn Kathir explaining. That is Ibn Kathir explaining. Do you guys have any doubt anymore? Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of Dhimme or elevate them above Muslimin. For they are miserable, disgraced, and humiliated. Read 27.33. Say, Sam, brother, come up live. My, my topic is almost done, so join live if you can, brother. Let me send you an invite. 27.3, let me do that as well. Let me do that as well. 27.3. Yes, brother, come up. Uh, let me open 27.3 as well. Give me a sec. 27.37. Uh, okay. And brother Sam is here. Hello, brother. How are you? Why like this, man? Why? Or, yeah, you always make me sound Indian when I join you. Why like this, man? I, I have no idea. <laughs> I want, I'm going to give you a link, and uh, guys, if you're wondering why I'm just sitting on my couch, because I'm laid back, I drove five hours, my cheat day today, so I feel like I'm going to pass out, so pray for me, God give me grace, but uh, yeah. the word Sahirun is used in 2737, in the story of Suleiman, alayhi salam, and the queen of Sheba, which is Bilqis in Islamic tradition, mm -hmm. right? Can you read what it says? Return to them, for we will surely come to them with soldiers that they will be powerless to encounter, and we will surely expel them therefrom in humiliation, and they will be debased. Debased. Now, if you look at the Arabic, tell us what the word is. Fahum zaghirun. Same word, brother. Fahum zaghirun. Now, I just shared the link. Now, why is this an interesting story? Because this is narrating solomon encounter with the queen of sheba now why is this a story that every christian needs to remember i just gave you the link the story will start at verse 15 all the way to 44. Uh, brother, uh, sorry i cannot take up the link from there hold on let me no, man, i give it to you here hold on man hold on i give it to you but i said i posted there anyway here it goes you can even show it to them now why is this an important article because this shows what was in Muhammad's mind and heart, that jihad is offensive, it's not defensive. How, do, how does this story prove it? How does this story, this fictional story, by the way, this is a fictional story that Muhammad adopted as part of the Quran, and it's in response to Shabarali. By the way, pray for me. 
that I get back in the groove of things, Lord willing, at least by tomorrow, get back on track with writing, researching and doing sessions and, you know, <clears throat> my program of staying healthy by the grace of Jesus Christ, because I will be responding to Shabri Ali this week and some Amen. of the law and blasphemies he raised against Jonathan McClatchy in their debate last week. And I'm going to call out Shabri Ali, open challenge to Shabri Ali, exposing Shabri Ali as a lying charlatan. And I'm not going to be nice, but I'm going to leave him no excuse to debate me so he doesn't use the excuse that I'm mean. But anyway, we'll get there, God willing. If the Lord J Jesus wills, I'll, I'll call him out during this week. Because, again, let me just say, guys, stop respecting this guy. He is a filthy, wicked, blasphemous demon. He has made a career. He's made money off of blaspheming Jesus Christ, blaspheming the triune God, and attacking the Bible. We need to stop respect, respecting dogs of the devil who bark at their master, Jesus. You need to call him what he is. He's a spiritual dog. He's a spiritual pig who needs to be silenced, like Elijah silenced the prophets of Baal. We need to stop showing this man respect. Honestly, if you really believe in Jesus, if you really love Jesus Christ, and you love the apostles and prophets who are filled with the Spirit, and the Bible is your standard, not Western Sisyphite Christianity, I challenge you to show me Elijah or the prophets or the apostles showing respect to people who would blaspheme Jesus, blaspheme God, and pervert the scripture. That's my open challenge to every one of you. Why are you respecting this guy? He is a filthy, satanic, spiritual dog. And I don't want to insult dogs. Real dogs are clean. He's a spiritual dog, used of the devil, and deserves no respect. But I'll get to him in Jesus' name. I'll get to him. But I wrote this article using his own criterion to prove that Muhammad was a wicked, vile, filthy terrorist, terrorist and he was. And yes, story, he was. But here's how. He says that the biblical stories is an indication that the writers of the Bible, right, were quote-unquote terrorists. So you can tell by the narratives that the Bible promotes terrorism and violence. Well, I turned the tables against them. Because this fictional story in the Quran, chapter 27, verses 15 of 44, there's a story Muhammad heard and thought it was a historical event in life of Solomon. If you read the story, Solomon hears about the Queen of Sheba and her people bowing down to the sun. Now, it's right there in my article, chapter 27, verses 15 of 44. <clears throat> now, how did you show... How did this show, as Adam keeps interrupting me, I'm going to have to throw him off his own channel and, you know, get him blocked from his own channel. Interrupt me again, brother. Make me upset. Make my day because I'm already upset. I will take out my anger on you. Can you do that again? So you went silent. See, that was, did I scare you, bro? It's your channel. You can block me, bro. No, no, I muted myself. Sorry. Man, he got scared, man. Anyway, listen. In Surah 27, 15 of 44. If you read the story, the Queen of Sheba doesn't know who Solomon is and his kingdom. Solomon is told by the hoopoe bird, there is a people who's led by a woman and they worship the sun. Solomon gets angry and sends them a threatening letter telling them they have to repent and worship Allah or he'll come upon them and attack them. Now understand the mindset of Muhammad. The Queen of Sheba and her people never attacked Solomon didn't know who Solomon was. Solomon hears they're worshiping the creation instead of the creator. He then does what Muhammad did historically. He sent a letter inviting her to Islam or threatening that he'd come with an army to attack her and humiliate her. So the Queen of Sheba, out of fear, goes visit Solomon, honors him, and then becomes a Muslim. You understand? This shows you Muhammad's view of jihad. Because what Solomon does in the story is what Muhammad did. He would invite people who never heard Muhammad, never heard about the Muslims, never attacked the Muslims, never troubled the Muslims, but living peaceably in their lands. And all of a sudden, a letter comes from Muhammad saying that I'm Muhammad, messenger of Allah, and I invite you to Islam, and I invite you to peace. If not, we will attack you until you pay jizya, or we kill you. You see what Muhammad did? He turned Solomon into a Muhammad and had Solomon do what Muhammad did to people, threaten people who never harmed Muhammad, attacked Muhammad to kill them if they didn't repent, become Muslim or pay jizya. 
No, you can speak, brother. I that's beautiful already. Like you said it all, and but like I want to I want to say it to Go Ramit. It. I want to say to Ramit. Ramit said, Ramit, come up live. You have the link in the stream. He said that he is still a Muslim, and okay. he has watched Christian Prince, Rob Christian, Adam yes, Seeker, yes. Sam Shimon, sitting back as a Muslim, and he's still a Muslim. So why don't you come up live and talk? Yeah, you want to talk? Go ahead if you can be respectful. But that's his choice. No one forces anyone to become what they don't want to be. Exactly. But oh, he's Muhammad did. In high school. Oh, he's a ninth grader in high school. Okay. Anyway, now if you want to read the story so they can see it, go ahead. Read it from fifteen forty-four, brother. You, can you read it for us, or you're going to get nervous because you're scared? From the from Quran, twenty-seven. In front of you, brother. It's right in front. I quote it in the article. I quote it in the article. A stuck for Allah. Get stuck for Allah. Sorry. Let's read it. Okay. Now hold on. Before, right. you, before you read it, Ramit, you said you're in the ninth grade in high school. How old is that? Guys, can you tell me how old that would be? Ramit, you said you're ninth grader in high school. How old would that make you? Now, guys, watch this. Listen. Listen to you. You too, Adam. You need to learn because you're still way behind. Okay. How old would that make you? You're a ninth grader in high school. Now, I know there's a delay between StreamYard and they get it. Okay. Now, guys, notice what he said. He won't debate because he's still a ninth grader in high school, meaning he's still a kid, a child. You know what he just did, right? He just buried his prophet because his prophet at the age of 54 mounted and slept with a nine-year-old girl. Well, if 15 is too young, then what about 19? I'm sorry, nine, 19. If 15 is too young because you're still a kid and not mature enough to debate, then what about a nine-year-old playing with dolls and on swings who then is taken to the bedroom of a 54-year-old pervert who's old enough to be her great-grandfather to then mount her sexually and physically. Thank you for helping us expose Muhammad. Keep it up, brother. It's only a Amen. matter of time you're going to come to Jesus Christ and worship him as your Lord and Savior. But go ahead. Now, guys, let's refocus. Notice Al this fictional story. Before I go to the story, there's another Muslim. Al Farooq, come up live. I've told you before as well. You have the link in the live stream. Let's see what you have to say. You got okay. Rob Christian hating, man. What a jealous guy. Rob, it's okay. We will forgive you and ignore you. But go ahead. <laughs> And verily gave knowledge unto David and Solomon, and they said, Praise be to Allah, who hailed preferred us above many of his believing slaves. And Solomon was David's heir. And he said, O mankind, lo, we have been taught the language of the birds, and have yeah. been given of all things. This surely is evident favor. And there were gathered together unto Solomon's his armies of the jinns and the humankind, and the birds, and they were set in battle order. Even the birds are in battle order. They yeah, and we know their language of the animals because they all speak oh. their communities. So that's a miracle. He knew their languages. So oh, yes. Many languages. And so they're all ready to go to war with Solomon. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Till when they reached the valley of the ants, and the ants exclaimed, Oh, ants, enter your dwelling. Least Solomon and his army crush you. Brother, but like he was given the knowledge of birds, not the ants, right? Language of. Well, that's, that's the miracle. He learns every language as he goes along because that's why he brought them. Oh, okay. Why he is higher I'm, than Ham? Ham is when you take Ham and it's very ill. You know, <laughs> keeping, it, keeping it 200. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. I bear keeping it 200 with you. <laughs> and Solomon smiled, laughing at her speech, and said, "My Lord, arouse me to be thankful to Thy favor, wherewithin Thou hast favored me and my parents, and do good that shall be pleasing unto Thee, and included me in." The number of the righteous slaves and he sought among the birds and said how is that i see not the hoopoo or is he among wait, the absent what did he say wait he said how is it i don't see the poopoo hoopoo 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 bird hoopoo. is it hoopoo <laughs> or poopoo uh probably hoopoo <laughs> the hoopoo the hoopo bird okay not the poopoo so now Solomon's no, no. angry that the hoopoo bird is not there where's the hoopoo bird is he out there doing poopoo keep going <laughs> Or is he among the absentees? I verily will punish him with hard punishment, or I verily will slay him. Dude, how can you punish a bird? You know, who, who, who no, bird because is a animals bird. form communities like human beings, according to Muhammad. So they mm -hmm. speak like humans, they have sharia like humans, and they can be punished like humans. Don't forget the hadith where the she monkey got stoned by other monkeys because she committed zinna. What's wrong with you? Stuck for a lot. Oh, on. yeah, sorry, brother. Or he verily shall bring me a plain excuse. 
but he was not long in coming and he said i have found out that thou apprehendest not and i come unto thee from shiva with sure tiding lo i found a woman ruling over them and she hath been given abundance of all things and hers is mighty throne i found her and her people worshiping the sun instead of allah and satan maketh their work fair seeming unto them that's also a quran verse by the way and their birth them from the way of truth so that they go not aright so that they worship not allah who bringeth forth the hidden in the heavens and the earth and knoweth what he are hide and what he are proclaim allah there is no god save him the lord of the tremendous throne now notice guys you just read the queen of sheba and her people did not know who solomon was never attacked solomon never threatened solomon keep that in mind how muhammad is narrating the story this fictional lie about solomon now notice solomon's response mm -hmm. solomon said we shall see whether thou speakest truth or whether thou art liar so birds can lie as well remember that go with my lighter and throw it down my unto them he doesn't smoke why would he need a lighter letter 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 yeah but see, see you see like muhammad you're making up lies about solomon solomon did have a lighter cuz he didn't smoke <laughs> sorry I'll brother that was with you i bet go with that this. was lip slip what does he tell the hoopo bird god yeah uh go with this my letter go with this my letter and throw it down unto them then turn away and see what they what answer they return the queen siba said when she received the letter o chieftains lo there hath been thrown unto me a noble letter lo it is from solomon and lo it is in the name of allah the beneficent the merciful now, plus now remember muhammad is creating solomon in his image and is having solomon do what muhammad did when he sent letters to people threatening to kill them they didn't become muslim so in arabic when solomon sent this letter by the hoopo bird he begins the letter by saying bismillah rahman rahim he begins it like the surahs of the quran which is interesting because every surah of the quran begins with bismillah rahman rahim except surah al tawbah because surah al tawbah there's no mercy in it according to the muslim scholars it's all about subjugation humiliation takbir okay go ahead now astaghfirullah exalt not yourself against me but come unto me as those who surrender she said o chieftain pronounce for me in my case i decide no case till ya are present with me they said we are lords of might and lords of great powers but it is for thee to command so consider what thou wilt command she said low kings when they enter a township ruin it and make the honor of its people's shame Atlantan what is that that's arabic transliteration oh. asalatan 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 okay yeah. thus will they do but lo i am going to send a present unto them and to see with what the messenger returns now let me explain what you're reading if you're paying attention you now destroyed muslim lie that jihad is defensive if you're paying attention if you're not uh -huh. there's not much i can do for you solomon is being depicted as a muslim like muhammad and like muhammad solomon sends a threatening letter to a people who did not attack solomon who did not threaten solomon who did not harm solomon a people living in peace in their land that their sin is they worship the sun so solomon like muhammad sends a letter warning them to repent become muslim they'll be saved or he's going to attack them so now the queen of sheba is frightened so she tells her council what should we do i mean he's threatening us should we fight him protect ourselves or what should we do and so now notice the response she gives now read it okay she sends a letter with an envoy to solomon so when the envoy came so when the envoy came unto solomon uh the king said what would you help me with wealth but that which allah hath given me is better than that which he hath given you Nah, it is yeah. Nay, brother. Nay, like yeah. Nay, it is yeah, and not I, who exalt in your gift. Yeah, you rejoice in your gift. I don't care about your gift. I'm more rich than you can imagine, sister. I'm keeping it one hundred with you, while prophet keeps it two hundred. Now, notice what Solomon says to her, supposedly. Return unto them 
we verily shall come unto them with hosts that they cannot resist and we shall drive them out from theirs with right. shame and they will be obscene a base man are you killing me, bro a base okay. sorry i want you to start your own english dialect brother because it's better than english we speak amen okay. with shame so now notice what solomon says okay go to them right let them know we're going to come with hosts that they can't defeat why cuz we're going to drive them out shame them humiliate them athalatan wahum sagirun now why is that important mm -hmm. solomon is going to do to these people what muhammad told muslims to do in chapter 9 verse 29 cuz there's the word sagirun that's the word used in chapter 9 verse 29 that when the muslims attack people like solomon was going to attack the queen of sheba people who never attacked Muslims, who didn't even know who Muslims were, who never harmed Muslims, who were living at peace. Their only sin is they weren't Muslims, like the Queen of Sheba, never attacked Solomon, never threatened Solomon, but was living at peace. But Solomon was the aggressor, like the Muslims were aggressor. When they attack these people and they pay jizya, that's a sign that they've been debased, sahirun. So Muhammad has Solomon doing the very thing to the Queen of Sheba that he did to people. And it's offensive jihad, meaning it wasn't Solomon defending himself because the Queen of Sheba threatened to attack him. She was at peace. She didn't even know who Solomon was. It's Solomon threatening her, making her become a Muslimah. Like Muhammad threatened these people. They didn't harm Muhammad. They didn't attack Muhammad. They were living at peace. He is the antagonist who threatened them. He's the bully. And there it is right there. Solomon makes uh, Muhammad makes Solomon a Muhammad before Muhammad was born. Now keep going. He said, O oh chiefs, which of you will bring me her throne before they come unto me? Surrendering. A stalwart of the jinn said, I will bring it thee before thou canest resist, rise from thy place. Is that the Ifrit, Ifrit, Ifrit of the jinn? But anyway, go ahead. Lo, I am verily, go ahead, man. I am ver verily, I am strong and trusty for such work. One with whom was knowledge of the scripture said, I will bring it thee before thy gaze returneth unto thee. Man, I hate this English. It's okay, man. It's going to help you speak perfect English if you learn it, man. <laughs> it was going to make me use uh, King James. And when he saw it set in his presence, Solomon said, This is of the bounty of my Lord that he may, may try me whether I give thanks or am ungrateful. Whosoever giveth thanks, he only giveth thanks for the good of his own soul. And whosoever is ungrateful is ungrateful only to his own soul's heart. For lo, my Lord is absolute in, in independence. Bountiful, he said, he said, disgust her, disguise her. her. Disguise Bring her. me a lighter, abuse them and disgust her. Disguise her throne, <laughs> disguise her throne for okay. her that we may see whether she will go aright, aright or be of those not rightly guided. Yes, let's so, see if she's one of the rightly guided ones. If not, we will find out. Now it's almost done. Poor guy, he's, he's getting he's learning. Oh, yeah, so when she came in, it was said unto her, Is thy throne like this? She said, It is as though it were the very one. And Solomon said, we were given the knowledge before her and we had surrendered uh, to Allah and all that she was wont to worship instead of Allah hindered her. For she came of disbelieving flock. It was said unto her, enter the hall. And when she saw it, she deemed it a pool and a bared her, leg. bared her legs. Solomon said, lo, it is a hall made smooth of glass she said my lord i have wronged myself and i surrender with solomon unto allah and lords of the world okay now did you guys catch it by the way he's doing a better job than most but then we got tony truther a, sen a little sensitive effeminate sissified of jellyfish take it easy on sam dude can you take a hike man and get lost you 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 sissies disgust me seriously but god have mercy on all of us now for the rest of you who are not sissified and keeping it 100 while we keep it 300. I bet. Now, did you understand the point of the story or no? Yes. Okay. Now, Adam Seeker, yes, this sir. never happened. This fictional story about Solomon Queen of Sheba never happened. It's a lie that Muhammad heard and adopted as part of the Quran. 
But notice that Solomon looks a lot like Muhammad and how Muhammad treated people. Yes. I bet. All right, now, with that rest, the rest of you. In this story, who threatened whom? Who <clears throat> attacked whom? Did the queen of she Sheba threaten Solomon first and come attack him so that Solomon had to do defensive jihad? Or did Solomon threaten her <clears throat> that he would attack her and humiliate her and her people using the very word sahirun that's used in chapter 9 verse 29 in fact uh, just to confirm i think that can you look at 929 and see go back earlier to my article the same article where it uses two words athilatin i believe and sahirun can you double check for me yes the, the same word? article yeah right here okay. what you're just reading it's in black and uh, italicized both yes let me find you that too far. You, you went too far up man the verses there is, that you just there is one there is one and chapter 27 man that you're reading man i'm here okay you see it where it says we will yeah shame and they will de be a debase the other one shame and debase it's athelatin wahum sahirun can you look at 929 to see if it's not just sahirun but it's the exact phrase uh athelatin wahum sahirun whether it uses the exact phrase because I believe it does. That 929 uses the entire exact phrase. Athilatin wahum sahirun. No, it says an yadi yadin wahum sahirun. Wahum sahirun while they are humiliated. So willingly an. Okay. Yadin wahum sahirun. Okay. Well, it still has the word sahirun. I just wanted to confirm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the reason why I highlighted Athelatin because earlier Queen Ashiba says that's what kings do. They come and shame people and attack them. And so that's what Solomon threatened, threatened to do. So what's the point? What's the point? The point hey. is Tony Truther is a little sissy and he keeps barking about this. Can you shut up? Adam's not offended. Stop pretending to be a pious Christian, you little sissy. Sorry about that, Adam, because this guy's now, I'm just telling him, take it easy. Adam, did you lose sleep? Is your wife going to leave you because I, I made fun no. of you? <laughs> Come on, man. We are brothers. So in, you sure? In, have fun. This is your channel, brother. Are you sure that your wife's not going to leave you because I just exposed that you can't read English? Why would she do that? Because Tony Truther is getting sensitive. He chipped the nail. How can you make fun of him? I don't see Jesus. In Shut up! Anyway, anyways, let's come back here. Coming back to you, brother. Okay. It's... Solomon, who threatened Queen of Sheba and her people. Queen of Sheba and her people were living at peace, worshiping the sun, never threatened to attack Solomon, never threatened to bring an army and humiliate him. Solomon sends a letter saying, we hear that you worship other than Allah. You better repent for Allah or we're going to come with an army. You can't resist. We're going to then shame you, humiliate you, sagirun, until you learn to submit to Allah. So it is Solomon who's the aggressor, who's offensive, who threatens to attack with jihad. Now, why would Muhammad portray Solomon this manner? To justify what Muhammad did. Himself, to justify, yep. see the dog is barking again. Can you go bark in your doghouse, you little fake? Come on, Tony. Christian? Come on, relax, <laughs> buddy. Come on. Yeah, use of the devil. If this is not of the devil, tell me what is. The guy won't shut up like a dog. Anyway, God have mercy. But it is Solomon who's the aggressor, who's attacking to kill people, who didn't attack him, who didn't threaten him, simply because they don't worship Allah. Because Muhammad is trying to justify what he's doing, saying, I'm just following the example of the prophets. I'm only doing what Solomon did. Solomon before me did the same thing. When Solomon heard their people didn't worship Allah, he did what I'm doing. Send them a letter saying, look, repent, fear Allah, you're safe, or we attack you, you pay jizya, and we humiliate you, or we kill you. So I'm doing what the prophets did. I have every right to threaten people who haven't attacked me, who haven't threatened me, who don't even know I exist, simply because they don't worship the way I worship. That's proof that jihad is offensive, not simply defensive. Oh, yes, brother. So you got and it? You I have... gave you the article, and I gave everyone else the link. You actually proved it with everything. And just basically... Sorry. No, I'm just saying, just from the story. Yes, from this story, it's even more comprehensive now because I was not able to compare 929 with this, but today I am, which is awesome. Thank you for Same word, another reference. Yep. 2737 yep. and 929. And by the way, two comments. 
Somali Christian TV brings David Wood, and they even have a blurb where they advertise the day before. When, so when he was live, they had about 500 people watching, and now the video's gone, 18,000. Someone as hideously ugly as David Wood, boring, with those huge nostrils that stick out, make him look like one of the orcs of the Lord of the Rings, got that many views, and we hardly get anyone. I'm really hurt and jealous and envious. I feel like retiring from apologetics. Secondly, oh, man. I, uh, Deuce, uh, is Deuce a brother or a sister? Deuce Volt. Uh, Deuce Volt is our good sister. Oh, she is? Because I blocked her on uh, Skype. No, no, she's a good sister. Okay, I'm sorry, sister. I blocked you on Skype. Uh, the reason why is because she started complaining because I didn't respond to her in time and give her attention. She's like, oh, wow, ignoring me. I said, all right, block! <laughs> I apologize, Deuce, that I'm a busy man and I don't work according to your timetable, that I wasn't able to respond in time, so I blocked you. But now that you're a sister, I'm going to be a little more sensitive to sisters. She's like, oh, wow, then respond, ignore me. I go, oh, here we go again, another drama king. <laughs> But she's a good sister. That's it, bro. She's a good that's sister. It. She's learning and she's doing a lot of stuff. So, uh, by the way, uh, my main focus of the today's one was uh, a guy who wanted to debate, who ran away as soon as I go I live. Uh, oh. That's another I already thing. gave you the birdie. Oh yes, you'd give me the, you gave you the finger, right? But now, check this out, brother. Because like but this is you the finger. Sorry? The middle finger you said he came on live, he gave you the middle finger, right? Oh, there was another guy who always come and give the middle finger. That's another guy. So they were like, oh, he okay, came in three well, times. You know, you know why, though? You don't understand why he gave you the middle finger. Because that's oh, the no, finger they use to show that Allah's one. Oh. Don't you know that? You know oh. when the Muslims give you the middle finger, which in English means like, you know, it's like uh, saying, go and, you know, whatever, yourself. It's like insulting yes. you. Mm. In Islam, when they give you the middle finger, it's not they're swearing to you. That's the finger they use to show Allah's one. Ah, okay. So the he was actually finger. swearing to Allah's one. Ah, but that's a very different kind of a one, by the way. Yeah, but that's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> that one they put in there. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Good one. Good one. Go ahead, so yeah, I was exposing Ibn Fuban Farooq's another flop lie, uh, where he said that Jazia, and that's what the whole live stream was, that jazia is like zakat and i showed the whole references the first one hour of it but you would maybe you can comment on this one as what well I'll, before what we i'll do is this. i'll upload this video to my channel so we can get more subscribers and we'll link saying go and subscribe because that's what i do and guys okay. that's one reason why i'm trying now if david wood wasn't such a self-centered white dictator he could help you guys by uploading your videos and get like over 30 000, 40 000 people to watch but no, David Wood, it's all about him. It's his world. He is the man. And if you don't bow to him, then he will never support you or your ministry. You see why we need to speak out against this white man? The black Hebrew Israelites are right. The white man is evil. And David Wood is the greatest proof of how evil white people are. Just remember that. Now, coming back to you, brother. The reason why I upload to my YouTube channel, and I pray that it's sincere from my heart, is because I want to get my traffic to go to your channels and subscribe and like your videos. Because glory to God, at least now, some of my videos, you got 7,000, 8,000, some are 18,000 people viewing. Them. Oh, yes. I'm trying to bring attention to you guys so you can go viral for the glory of the Lord Jesus. So we'll upload this. And Prophet Google, guys, don't forget, he's still in the hospital. And yet he's watching. No, no, he's, out. he's out. No, today. He's out today. Oh, he he's told us hospital. today. He's out. He's oh, he's out. You left, bro? I just talked yeah. to him two hours ago. He's in the hospital. Yeah, during the live stream, he told us that he's out his home right now. During okay, the live stream. So, so he's okay. He's discharged. Glory to Jesus Christ. Because he was in the hospital and he uploaded uh, the video. So Prophet Google is the man. Pray for him that God will help him and I and every one of us who need to stay healthy to keep getting healthier, that I can keep this weight off and be disciplined. Because our health can be a hindrance or a blessing. If we don't take care of our bodies, then it can be a hindrance. Because you see, when you're not healthy and you're ill then you become bedridden and you can't do the work of the Lord. So pray that he gets healthy. Pray I get healthier and stay healthy for the glory of Jesus. Pray for the provision and pray the Lord will comfort him and pray that these channels go viral. I'm going to try to bring Rob Christian sometime next week. But Amen. I'm going to upload this to my channel about Ibn Fib, and I'm going to retitle it. Why? Because you need to put his name in your description so people know it's a rebuttal to him. Got it. All right. I'll do that. Because you got it. Because people, when they say, why haven't you reverted to Islam? 
okay, they don't know what it's about. They may watch, may not watch. But if they know it's about Uthman ibn Fibbin, Fat Slob, uh, Al Baqarah, Stone Kissing Pagan, then they'll watch. But what did you want me to say? Yeah, watch this first, and then you can give your comments because I have already destroyed him. No, I already know. He's, he's saying it's like a tax. Oh, you no, know, he's saying it's like zakat. So check this out. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and because still I, use I the services being provided by the government, you have to pay into it. It's a very simple thing. If you use the services, you're going to be paid. So it is a service fee. It's not a non-Muslim tax because if it's a non-Muslim tax, then even if you don't use the services, you should have to pay. But that's not the way jizya works. <laughs> Only when the government that is run by Islamic law provides you services as security, you know, uh, as far as uh, welfare, as far as what today we have roads and hospitals and all these things, then you need to pay into that, whether you're a Muslim or not. As a Muslim, you'll pay zakat, you'll give sadaqah, you'll have those methods of go giving, which are religious obligations. As a non-Muslim, you will not be forced to follow Islamic religious practices, but you will pay jizya which can be less than zakat sometimes so this is so the only well, thing that he said he just said after two hours she responds saying i have no skype well someone with a name deuce vault that skyped me i'm sorry sister i thought it was you all right i apologize i didn't know there are other people who are now stealing your name yeah so he's trying to say muslims play zakat and so the jews christians pay jizya yeah i, now, I think sorry now, i already know you thoroughly refuted him but the most basic objection and i'll just give my base unless you wanted to say something before i give my basic objection please 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 i have said enough okay, now, just to tell you what a disgusting slob this guy is and he deserves no respect see there are some muslims you can respect other muslims that deserve no respect because they're such wicked lying murderous blasphemous spiritual dogs and they are shabir ali is one of them i have to be honest you don't like me being blunt may the lord change me if i'm going too far so i don't grieve the holy spirit but I'm not going to change for you guys. Now, coming may, back to... May I, may I add to yeah, the Shabir Ali sorry. point? Keep cutting me off, man. I'll make sorry. you eat King James English. <laughs> sorry, please don't. <laughs> like, Shabir Ali is like Yaya, you know. They say things very polite, politely and politically, but yes. they are so offensive. They are so offensive. Like, you, you want to, like, jump off your seat and, like, punch them, literally. But like they are so politically correct that it's just like you know the nowadays like we people don't exist because we people are not politically correct we people say everything straight up front these guys are just politically correct but they are abusing they are blaspheming i just wanted yeah. to add to this yeah and and yahya that's why when you people you guys felt sorry for yahya really again my brothers sisters i love you I do, but you upset me. This is why I rebuke many of you, because go and listen to my debate with Yahya. Go listen to it. It's there. And by the way, Prophet Google, if you can find the full unedited version, up, upload it to our channel, because that's not on our channel. Go and listen to it. In the midst of the debate, he went on a rant. He started blaspheming Jesus, blaspheming the God of the Bible, and he started mocking the scripture. And I told the mod, I go, the gloves are off. I go, you're not going to stop me. I'm not going to make his prophet cry. And I utterly humiliated him. So Yahya, his niceness, don't let it deceive you. He is a wicked blasphemer. Go watch the debate. Go see how he insults and blasphemes Jesus, our Lord, and the Bible. I'm not lying. Go watch it. Yeah, I destroyed him twice in my channel as well, brother. Yeah, but he, this the problem is, when are the Christians going to wake up? Jesus didn't say to be pushovers to such people. He wasn't a pushover. Watch what Jesus did to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and Paul did to the Judaizers and those who opposed the gospel or Elijah. Man, that's in your Bible, man. See how they treated people who blaspheme and perverted the ways of the Lord. They were not kind to them. Stop thinking you're being a Christian and honoring to Jesus when you let people blaspheme and you're smiling and just saying Jesus loves you. You are pathetic because if someone insults your mother, You'd be the first to say something. Someone who insults your sister or your daughter, you'd be the first to do something. But when they uh, insult the honor of your God, you sit back. Not that Jesus needs you to defend them, but at least show yourself for Jesus that you're more zealous for the honor of Jesus than you are for your family members. Come on, man. Wake up, guys. Honestly. Seriously. Enough. You see how the sissified form of Christianity has gotten us nowhere. Prove me wrong. This sissified a feminine approach to evangelism. Where has it gotten the church in the West? 
The church has become a joke, rocked with scandals, capitulating to the world. Come on, it doesn't work because it's not the way of Jesus and the prophets and the apostles. Now, with that said, how do I respond to this guy? Very easy. Now, notice what a sick, demonic bastard he is. He's saying Jizya is like zakat. Well, number one, there would be no need to pay Jizya if you Muslims didn't come and attack my city, my town, and my village. In other words, why should I pay Jizya to Muslims who are now threatening to take over my land, a land that's mine, a land that I've been living in, a land in which I dwelt in peace until you showed up with your threats? I mean, what a stupid, demonic deceiver this guy is. <clears throat> Jizya is imposed because Muslims come and take over lands that are not their own. So why should I pay you Muslims for protection when I don't need you to protect me if you leave me alone and leave me in my land? The only reason why I'm now paying you for protection is because now you stole my land, you stole my property, and you took over the government. It's like a mafia boss who comes into your neighborhood, into your block, and says, hey, we now own the neighborhood. So you pay us to protect you, and if you don't pay us, then we kill you. Well, hold on. What gave you the right to come and take over the block? What gave you the right to come and take over this area of the city? We've been here long before you. you we've been living at peace. We didn't need protection. We're doing fine. But now you come and take over, insist I have to pay you. And if I don't pay you, then you're going to kill me. So I'm actually paying you to protect myself from you killing me. You see the point? Yep. In other that, words, that's... if the Muslims don't attack California, why should would there be any need for them to pay Jizya? No, right? Nope. nope. So Jizya is only extracted... If and when a Muslim attacks your city and takes over it, why are you attacking my city? Hold on, Mr. Muslim. We've been living here long before you. The Egyptian Christians were living in Egypt long before you Muslims. The Assyrian Christians were living in Iraq long before you Muslims. And Jerusalem was in the possession of Christians, not you Muslims. And Syria was predominantly Christian. What happened? How did these lands all of a sudden become populated by Muslims? And fell under the hands of Muslims because you murderers, you rapists, you thugs came and you attacked these places and you took the lands from the Christians and the Jews and the Hindus and then told them, You want to live in the land that was yours that we stole? You better pay us jizya or we kill you. Really? Exactly. And so that's I have to pay you to live in my land that my ancestors owned long before you showed up. A land in which I didn't have to pay anyone any money to live in at peace. But now you stole my land and I got to pay you to live in the land that belongs to me or you're going to kill me and take over my land. Really? There you go. I hope that, that answers it. No, you perfectly answered. And that's what I showed. Uh, I took the example of Egypt, basically. And I showed from the horse's own mouth how yes. they have written the history. And I shared the link up live as well. It's in Arabic where they showed that if they do not pay the jazia, they are killed, their women were raped, and all of that. And the Mu'arrikh means the writer is of Arab al Mukrizi fi kitab an kitab al haya bin Shari ilahi Umar bin Abdul Aziz. So it is, the link is already with the people already. They raped the nuns, they took the. the they even shows that they steal their things, wood, even wood for burning. They even stole that. And yeah. it's all here. And I showed it and I explained it and I translated it and everybody uh, read it yeah. because this is all allowed if you do not pay jazia. They, they killing and burning lands of the Coptics and the nuns are raped even. And Abdul Malik is reporting that, not somebody else. Okay. So you get it there. And so let me tell the Muslims who are listening, Islam Defender, call on, call on StreamYard, defend Islam. Let's see if you can do it. But for the rest of you, this is what I tell the Muslims who ask me, am I on the side of Israel or Palestine? I'm not on the side of Israel. I'm not on the side of Palestine. I'm on the side of King Jesus. I'm for Jesus' rule and government. I'm not for Israel and it's Zionism and I'm not for Palestine. But let's, let's, let's play that game. The Jews are invaders. They stole the Palestinian land, and now the Jews should give it back. Well, why don't you practice what you preach? Why don't you be consistent? 
Are you not going to give back all the lands that you stole from Christians, Jews, and Hindus? So if you really want the sympathy of the world, and you want the world to condemn Jews as terrorists who invaded your land, then why don't you now point the finger at your prophet and the Muslims who came before you, who then stole the lands of other people and dispossessed them, why don't you then condemn your prophet and these jihadi thugs and the caliphs? And why don't you now give back the lands to the people that you stole it from? Give Iraq back to the Christians. Give Egypt back to the Christians. Give Syria back to the Christians. And FYI, right, if you're going to follow your Quran, and by the way, don't misquote me. I'm not saying Israel belongs to the Jews. I'm saying your Quran says that the land was given to the Israelites, Bani Israel. Go read exactly. Surah Al-Maida, chapter 5, verse 20 to 26. And then Surah Al-Isra, it says, Allah commanded the Bani Israel to go and attack the giants in the land because the land was given to them and they would return to the land. That's Surah Al-Maida, chapter 5, Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17. So when you practice what you preach, when you do to others what you want the Jews to do to you, give back your land, Give back the land to all these people that you stole it from. Then maybe I'll take your cry seriously. I Then maybe I'll take your cries seriously. When you give back Pakistan to India, when you give back Iraq to the Christians, when you give back <clears throat> Syria to the Christians, Egypt to the Christians, then maybe I'll take your cries seriously. All right, exactly. And I did a live stream on this already on 520 to 26 because this land according to allah was already for jews and uh, umar uh, umar took it from them to begin with so basically this land according to quran belongs to jews exactly. why are they claiming it yeah in fact here you fake muhammadan stone lickers why don't you give hagia sophia back to the christians why do you put a knife in the heart of Christians and spit on them by taking over Hagia Sophia and turning it into a mosque, having someone say the adhan, the call to prayer, and having Muslims pray in Hagia Sophia, knowing that you're spitting in the face of Christians because Hagia Sophia was one of the most holy churches to Christians and dear to their heart. Yes. Amen. So Amen. your crocodile tears don't move me. And then on top of that, to make it even worse, you fake. You talk about Palestine. How are you Palestinian Muslim treating the Palestinian Christians in your midst? Do they have equal rights with you? Or do you treat them as second class citizens so that if you do take over the land, will they also have equal rights with you? Or will you then impose dimitude on them and subjugate them and make them pay jizya to you once you take over? Because definitely if you take over Palestine, you're not going to make it a secular government. It's going to be a predominantly Islamic government where you impose jizya, dimitude on the Palestinian Christians. We're not stupid, guys. We weren't born yesterday. Now, Adam was born the day before, and I was born two days before that. Oh, really? Okay. By the way, you guys can confirm this. This was told to me. I don't know if it's true or not. I was told if it, if it did happen, then you know it's a miracle of Jesus Christ. A miracle of Jesus Christ. Islam defender, I think that's Yahya. Yahya, call us. Call us on StreamYard because I want to put you in your yeah. place lovingly. The now, link is in the stream. And Ali also. Ali, yeah, please, you are listening. Call. You are sending text. You have a question? Come up live and ask the question. Now, and guys, we'll get the answer. I want you to hear this. Can someone confirm this? I was told that when the Adhan was made, the call to prayer was made for Hagia Sophia. The Muslim who did it died a couple of days after that. Did you know that? I did not know that. Sorry. Yes. And someone said it's confirmed. Guys, can you do me a favor? Can you confirm? Because I don't want to spread rumors. But they and said send the link. Say it again. And send the link over here. Yes. Guys. That, that the man who made the first call to prayer in Hagia Sophia, after that, he died a few days later. If that happened, you know it's a miracle of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. It's a sign to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. So guys, confirm it. Someone told me when it happened. They go, you know that guy died? I didn't look into it. This is our God. He is the risen Lord of glory. Now, are they calling? Do they want to take customers? 
I, I, I'm, I'm willing to take all the customers. I'm sending the link. Ali and Islam Defender. There you go. I am sending the link again. Ali See? has a question. Islam Defender has a question. I've been oh, sending my link. See, they say, Shukumad said, yes, I'm correct. It's confirmed. Rob Christian says it's confirmed. Guys, a miracle confirmed. Amen. That person who made the call to prayer in Hagia Sophia, a call to worship Satan, the true God who honors his church, struck him dead. He died. Amen. And you know, Jesus says that death and Hades are in his hands. He determines when you live and when you die. A sign for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Our Lord Jesus is alive and he will not be mocked. So that man died as a sign. This is what's going to happen to you if you oppose me and my church, my people on earth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Showing how real you are. Hold on, let me let the cat out because the cat needs to go out. Now, sure. with that said, as we're waiting for customers, with that said, can I share with you a true miracle that happened this weekend? And I, Andy was on my stream earlier. I don't know if he's on here. If he's online, I'll have him confirm it on Skype. Did you know the Lord did a miracle that blew the, all of our minds? Blew all Please of our minds us. this weekend. Please. Yes, a, a miracle. You guys may think, what? It, it, I'm telling you it's a miracle. Now, let me let me tell you the miracle. I was in California to get away, to meet brothers and sisters, Lord Jesus, and just go sightseeing, just to keep myself occupied instead of sitting here thinking of my daughters, right? Now, one brother reached out to me on Skype. His name is Andy. He tells me, can we meet? I said, I'll be in Irvine, California on Saturday. He contacted me Friday. I go, contact me. Well, he never did. Didn't meet him. Now, that's Saturday. Sunday, I go to Huntington Beach, 8 p.m. at night. Now, guys, look at the story. He now contacted me Sunday on Skype. I didn't get to listen to his message. So as far as I knew, I was not going to see this guy. So Saturday, he's supposed to see me. Saturday, he's supposed to see me. doesn't show up. Sunday, now Huntington Beach, California, is about an hour away from Irvine Spectrum Center. Okay. 8 at night, 8 p.m. at night, I go to see Huntington Beach. I go park my car. As I'm walking down the street, two young Hispanic brothers, they're standing on the corner waiting for their ride. Their ride is about 10 minutes away. So had I been, let's say, 10 minutes later, they would have been gone. Had I come an hour earlier, I would not have seen them. Had I been there half an hour earlier, I would not see them. These two young brothers, the, the youngest of the two recognized me, Sam Shamoon. I go, yeah, how do you know me? He goes, oh, bro, he came and hugged me. And the other guy says, hey, Sam, it's me, Andy. Wow. The guy, the guy I was supposed to meet Saturday that blew me off unintentionally. Sunday, he reaches out to me. I don't talk to him. I show up in the same location right before he's about to take off. Because his ride was 10 minutes away. Had he gotten in his ride, I would not see him. He saw me, recognized me. I didn't know who he was. He goes, it's me, Andy. Talk about miraculous timing of the Lord Jesus. Miraculous timing. He got blown away and I got blown away. I go, you know this is a miracle, right? I go, You're, you and I just witnessed a miracle, right? He goes, yeah. You know this is not possible for me to meet you of all places in Huntington Beach because you don't know I was coming. I didn't know you were you were here. And the timing, I ended up parking at the precise location where I would walk towards you and run into you. I didn't park somewhere else. I parked in this location where I took this street, ran into you, and I came 10 minutes before your ride was to show up. That means God wanted me to meet them. And then it became clear to me why God wanted me to meet them. By the way, Prophet Google, if you can, brother, the Lord Jesus refresh you and give you health. Upload this session to our channel, and I just did one with Hussein, which I finished 20 minutes earlier. Upload that if you can, Aziza. Lord bless you and reward you, because I want people to hear these stories and learn from these men and hear about these miracles. Now, here's why the Lord had me meet him. Guys, you want to hear what's amazing? Yes, please. Okay. Now, it became clear to them and me why God made sure I met them that night, not the day before. Why did the Lord... Permit that 
this guy and me would not meet on Saturday, but we would meet Sunday at that location. That's it, the turns medical. Out, it turns out that David Lynn was there. David Lynn from Canada, that evangelist who I don't like and I don't endorse. And I encourage you guys don't endorse him. And you're going to see why in a minute. I'm going to tell you why. Do not endorse him. He's sold out. He's compromised. May the Lord convict him to repent or the Lord protect people from him. And I'm going to tell you why. More confirmation. David Lynn is not reliable. And I hope he hears this so he can make more videos attacking me because that's all he can do. David Lynn was at Huntington Beach. I guess he came from Canada preaching. And that Andy's younger brother, his younger brother, went there to be baptized by David Lynn. So I go, why are you here? He goes, because David Lynn came and baptized me. Well, I had a long talk, and glory to God, the Lord used me to open his eyes because he said that David Lynn was there bashing Catholics again. Okay, well, that, well that's fine. You want to bash Catholics, but you're going to bend over backwards for Marcus Rogers, who's an anti-Trinitarian heretic, a false prophet, who prophesies lies in the name of the Lord. Him, you're going to give a free pass, but the Catholics who worship the triune God, let's bash them. But it gets worse. He's recording these baptisms, and he says... When he baptized me, guess what David Lynn did? Now, when a Trinitarian baptizes someone, we dip the person in water and say, I baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, the man told me, the young man told me that when he baptized me, he said, I baptize you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Two red flags. Number one, he didn't say, I baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Number two, he said, Yeshua HaMashiach. Because it turns out that David Lynn is trying to play to the oneness modalist camp who only baptized the name of Jesus. And the reason why he's saying in Hebrew, because he's got some Christians who are into the Hebrew roots that support him. So this sellout, this wicked compromised sellout is playing to his base that support him because he's recording these baptisms. So he doesn't want to say in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, lest he alienates the modalists who support him. And he said in Hebrew, in order to please those who are into the Hebrew roots movement. That's what he did. And I told that man, you got baptized by someone who is not of the Lord because you're into the cult of personality, personality cult movement. What makes David Lynn special that you need to get baptized by him? So this is why the Lord had me run into him. Now notice God's timing. I ended up coming at that night, 10 minutes before their ride showed up, right after he got baptized because the Lord allowed it so I can then teach them and warn them. And now glory to the Lord. They're going to be going with a brother named McVine. He's also on my YouTube channel. And McVine shows up. You can ask him. McVine met them. And he's going to take them back to their Catholic church because they're from the Catholic church. So you see how God worked? There you go. A miracle. Awesome. Like seriously speaking, sure. that's like, yes, praise be to Lord. Love it. And truth sure. exposed. Expose me. By the way, truth exposed said, I am just a kid. So expose me. I will request Sam not to say a single word. Come up and expose okay, right me right here. I can, if he wants to come up and just debate you, I can just go back and eat some more yeah, food. Yeah, let's I see if he, if he, if he, come, because like he said, I am a kid. He can't, he can't challenge you. Because you are too senior. Oh, and I am just a kid. So oh. let's see if he can, Wait, if he on, can expose on. the kid. Before, before he comes up. Truth exposed. Seriously, how old are you, man? How old is he? I have no idea. He's just... Okay, truth yeah. exposed. Can you tell me how old you are? And I'm asking seriously because I get confused when you say that you're a kid. No, I am a kid. He, he's calling me a kid. Me. Oh, so wait. Hold on. I don't get it. He won't debate me, but he'll debate you because you're a kid? Yeah. So why would he <laughs> want to debate me, man? Man, the logics. <laughs> so I, why why does it? Oh, ah, no, no. I understood now. The reason why he wants to beat kids is because he's following the son of his prophet. Because Muhammad liked to have sex with kids who are playing with dolls. So he's more uh. fond of kids. Ah, I'm sorry, truth exposed. Forgive me. I didn't know you're following the son of your prophet. Like your prophet liked little girls' kids to play with. Girls who are still playing on swings with dolls, and he mounted them. Like Aisha was nine, he was 54. That's why you want Adam Seeker, because he's a kid like Aisha. Oh, I get it now. Alhamdulillah, brother. <laughs> Allah, <laughs> as with hair gel, as with gel. All right.
Anyway, you got no customers, brother? It seems like they are all running away, so I think we can okay, end this stream. Man. Uh, thank you for jumping in. It was awesome. Ibn Fuban Farooq is fully demolished and destroyed by all the Islamic sources as we have seen and shown. And uh, now it's up to them. They, and I have challenged it, Ibn Fuban Farooq as well because Ibn Fuban Farooq went to Haris Sultan and had a debate with Haris Sultan in Urdu. This guy, if he wants to have a debate in Urdu because he did a live debate with Haris Sultan in Urdu, so he can come up live with me and I will have a debate with him in Urdu. Let's see <laughs> how far he can run away. Only one condition though. When before you start the debate in Urdu, I give the introductions and then I begin with Awesome. <laughs> and then when we end, I have to then make the conclude, concluding remarks and then sing another song. Two cheese party, a two cheese, he must the moss. Two cheese party, a two cheese, he must the moss. All right. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me, man? You hurt my heart, man. Man, the first song I know, the last song I have no idea because you totally created a new song out of it, quite frankly. I don't two even cheese, know what you said. Two cheese, two cheese party, a two cheese, he must the moss. You don't never heard that, man? Man, I must have heard it, but I do not comprehend what you are saying. Like, you, you have a new dialect of Hindi. <laughs> Man, I just sing Bollywood, man. No good, no good, brother, man. Bollywood. So it's like, it goes like this. So now you sing with me. Tirchito pi wale. Oh. Babu bhole bale. Oh. Oh. Tu yaad aane laga hai. Oh. By the way, brother, <laughs> can I share something with you? Yes, brother. From my heart, I thank you for having a day job. Brother, really, thank, I you. thank you. Please don't quit your day job to sing because you're not going to make it. Keep your day job. So I thank you for having a day job from my heart. Amen. It's an Praise English thing, brother. I'm going to teach you how to be American. In Amen. English, when someone sings, he's terrible. They say, hey, don't quit your day job, meaning you're not going to make it as a singer. So keep your job. Oh, so you are telling me I, I sing worse than you? <laughs> so what I just said was, I thank you from my heart that you have a day job because if you try to make it as a singer, you will be the cause of more deaths than COVID. No. <laughs> oh man, I was so serious about the day job thing. I didn't realize you were like, come on, man. Yeah, and on top of that, even though they found vaccination for COVID, there is no cure for your singing, man. When you, when you sing, the people, they stay dead, man, in five minutes, man. Okay. Man. Oh, you know, I have Jesus with me. He'll raise them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, that, it, 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 because human solution will never solve the death toll from your singing. It has to be a miracle from heaven. Amen. You got it. Man. Oh, man, that was crazy. <laughs> well, if there's no customers, then we can take brick, man. Yeah, all, right. all of the customers ran away. So thank you so thank very you. much, guys. Uh, Take the video, throw it out, send it to everyone, and the yeah, throw we'll upload it. We'll ran away it. again. This uh, he's like he's, they're, they're more coward than Aisha, who actually stood in front of Muhammad at the age of 53, at the age of nine. Right. And these guys are more coward than Aisha, basically. Yeah, because you know what? Honestly, people think we joke, but imagine a young girl, nine-year-old, not knowing what's going on, in a bedroom with a grown man who is old enough to be her great grandfather and she sees this grown man naked and he does stuff to her that she's not prepared for psychologically, physiologically. Muhammad was a cancer, a demon. Thank Jesus, our Lord, he's burning in hell for what he did to humanity. But anyway, that's yeah, it. And, 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 and even mafakhaza, you know, that word is not oh, even man. in English. Like that word is not even in English. And I have shown a live stream in the Arabic mafakhaza and what Muhammad has been doing to that little young girl when she was like not even nine you know yeah, yeah he's, a sick demon. he's a sick demon yeah well that's one that we call it thawing in english thawing yeah who oh, yeah, is anyway. here is that a customer who we got one here no, man no. Yeah, uh, i'm secondly i'm secondly give me finger. by the way hope look i want to sing you yeah. song hold on come okay. down I sing you song. when okay. i'm feeling blue all i have to do 
Just take a look at you. Then I'm not so blue. When okay, so. Okay, 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 that's it. I'm not going to play it, man. Okay, okay. Bye, man. See, that's the song. Hey, must, must. Come on. Oh, yeah, that's what you were singing in there. Yeah. Jesus, buddy, must, must. Play, play. Come do on. Like song, do you like the song? Yeah, if you play it, you don't give me two. So give me, come on, play so I can dance. Come on. Start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, baby. Okay, man. I love you, man. Oh, okay, Bloop. Hoop. By the way, okay. why do you call yourself Hoop Bloop? I'm still trying to figure that one out. He left? Little He's chick. on mute. He did it. Mute himself. I don't unmute, know unmute, man. Why do you call yourself Hoop Bloop? Because uh, I don't want to, like, uh, give my personal name. She no, my personal I, I know. Name. You don't have to give personal name. But of all the names in the world, you can find something else. Hoop Loop? Uh, because I think Hoop Loop is more suitable name for me. It suits me. It suits okay. my uh, character. Man. Okay. Because I don't know what Hoop Loop means. What does it mean? Does it have a meaning? Um, I, I don't know, actually. So what a very suitable name. You don't know what it means because you still don't know who you really are. You are a mystery to yourself. <laughs> must, 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 must. Okay, okay, I think I, I should go now. Bye. I just oh, came yeah. to play the song. Sorry. Okay, bye, bye. Okay. You don't be scared. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Oh, bye, 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 bye. Oh, bye, bye. All right. Okay, it seemed like who blew was a Christian. <laughs> no, he is. You he know, he's one of my regulars. He comes to my channel. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I didn't know that. I thought we oh. have a customer. Okay, guys. All right, guys. Time up. Lord bless you. And hey, Prophet Google, if you're listening, upload this brother's video, the one I did with Hussein today, and try to find my debate with Yahya to see what kind of blasphemy it is. But love you guys. Now I'm gonna and I'm gonna leave too by singing. We have a uh, Syrians when they finish a wedding. I don't know if other people do it. Some people tell me they do it in all weddings. And the Syrian singer will say bye bye, oh bye 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 bye, oh bye bye, oh bye 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 bye, oh bye bye. I watch them. Okay, brother. I will see you. Man. All right, brother. Take care. Okay, Thank man, you for man, man. No Take good, care. no good problem, man. I love you, man. Peace out, man. Love you. God bless you. And uh, that was an interesting uh, ending. Uh, and I loved the way the Solomon story correlated with uh, 929. Quite frankly, even I didn't know that. Um, yeah, so Sam actually brought up a nice uh, correlation between the two. And it was beautiful. I hope you guys liked it. And plus, you know, Sam's must must movement was also pretty good. Uh, loved it, loved it, and it was awesome. And as we can see, none of the customers wants to come up live. They only wants to dance around, and that's it. Thank you, Who Blue, for coming up and giving the song up live, <laughs> which was a good one. And uh, there is uh, okay. So I don't think I have anybody else over here. Abbas, as always, runs away. He's a coward. Uh, he has been debate. He, I have debated him. Uh, once after that, he just comes in and runs like a coward. That's his standard operating procedure. He knows he cannot refute me. Uh, so now he will elude to just basic stupidities. Uh, standard operating procedure. Uh, and then that's it uh, for now. Have fun, guys. Enjoy. Uh, all of the links are in the live chat, what I was showing. So that whenever you are talking with somebody, you should have every relational article and reference with you. And Somali Christian Channel, God bless you guys. You guys are doing an awesome, awesome job. Love your work and may the Lord bless you even more for your ministry and bring many to the truth and the light. In my last live stream, I showed even the Muslimin of Indonesia are saying that the Somali Christian channel is creating a tsunami of apostates in Indonesia. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Even the Muslim scholars who are making video against them are saying that they are creating a tsunami of apostates. 
what more do you need man so watch my last live stream i have done the initial part on tsunami uh, somali christian tv uh, in somalia in somali christian tv channel so know them they are doing a great job hallelujah praise be to lord and with that i would say again as i always say jesus is lord there is the only way the only way to salvation is through him either you accept him right now or when he comes every knee shall bow there is only two way that your knee will bow in front of him so you can either bow the knee now with the love and compassion or you can bow the knee when you will be fearful of him because the second coming is not going to be a very humble like a first coming as we see in revelation he will come as a king of the alamin of the world he will come as a king as the owner as the malik of the alamin and then every knee shall bow so now if you accept him it will be in his love and in his message that he has given you and you will have the eternal salvation so you want that accept him this is why we are showing these streams we are showing you all the issues we are showing you everything to know that islam is the most false religion in the history of false religions get out of this get out of this darkness because the only way the truth and the life is through him god bless you all yeshua akbarul azim take care guys